This topic is about the application of computer control in engine systems. An engine management system overview. You will learn what an engine management is, its classification, and its basic components. Furthermore, it will give you insights on the current technology used on today's modern engines, the application of computer control. Computer control gave birth to what we know as the electronic engine management system, commonly known as the electronic fuel injection or EFI. But as you watch this video, you will learn that electronic fuel injection is just one of the many applications of computer controlled systems. Computer control in engine management systems offers several advantages over mechanical systems and it will be discussed in the later part of the video presentation. If you have any question, don't hesitate to email me at pamulasherwin at gmail.com. An FB group chat will also be created for your class, so wait for my invite. If in any case that an internet connection is not available in your area, you can pay me a visit at Marikina Polytechnic College, Automotive Building, Room 8111. Just text me at 0928-620-0249 prior to your visit. So what is Engine Management System? The Engine Management System can be defined as the group of parts that controls engine power output. Remember, that there are three basic elements for the engine to produce power. First is correct air-fuel ratio. Depending on engine condition, such as at idle, an engine will require an air-fuel ratio of 14.7 is to 1. It means that in order to attain complete combustion during idle, an engine will need 14.7 kilograms of air to burn 1 kilogram of fuel completely. Of course, the air-fuel ratio will be different as the engine goes from idle to wide open throttle position. The second element required for the engine to produce power is the proper time in which the spark occurs. On gasoline engines, the spark necessary for the initiation of combustion during idle must be timed a few degrees before the end of the compression stroke, approximately 2 degrees to 10 degrees before top dead center depending on engine model. On the other hand, the spark must occur earlier as the engine speed increases. The third element required for the engine to produce power is good compression. The compression of the air and fuel mixture occurs as the piston moves up with both the intake and exhaust valves close. The greater the compression, the greater the power produced by the engine. Any component will affect the delivery or control of the formation of the air-fuel mixture and the timing of the spark is part of the engine management system. Engines with components that mechanically deliver or control the formation of the air-fuel mixture and the timing of the spark are called mechanical engine management systems, examples of which include carburetors and distributors with vacuum and centrifugal advancers. On the other hand, Engines that utilize computer control to deliver or control the formation of the air fuel mixture and the timing of the sparks are called electronic engine management system. An electronic engine management system is composed of three basic components the ECU, sensors, and the actuators. The ECU or the electronic control unit is the brain of the system. It commands what actuators should do based on the input from the sensors. ECU is a Society of Automotive Engineers terminology for computers that controls a system. An ECU that controls engine functions are called Engine Control Module or ECM. Sensors and are another vital component of the electronic engine management system. Sensors are input devices. They send information to the ECM about the engine speed, temperature of the coolant, engine load, 
and amount of oxygen to name a few. Actuators, in contrast to sensors, are output devices. They perform tasks as signaled by the ECM. Typical example of actuators are injectors and igniters. So, how does computer-controlled system works? Well, sensors detect engine conditions and sends that information to the ECM. The ECM then processes the said information and gives signal to the actuators. In effect, the actuators converts the electrical signal coming from the ECM into work. Come to think of it, a computer-controlled system works just like your body. Your sense of touch, smell, hearing, taste, and sight represents the sensors in a computer-controlled system. When you touch a hot surface, your sense of touch tells your brain that the surface is hot. Your brain represents the engine control module in a computer-controlled system. Your brain processes the information sent by your sense of touch and commands your arm to act accordingly, so as not to harm yourself. In this scenario, your arm represents the actuator in a computer-controlled system. The EFI is perhaps the earliest application of a computer-controlled system for air-fuel mixture formation. With the use of different sensors, the EFI system is able to detect the operating condition of both the engine and the vehicle. Based on the signals from the sensors, the ECM is able to calculate the correct fuel injection volume. The injectors will then inject the proper volume of fuel at the correct timing signaled by the ECM. As seen on the figure, during startup, the ECM receives the signal from the ignition switch and the crankshaft position sensor. In effect, the ECM will command all injectors to inject fuel all at the same time to ensure engine startability. At the same time, during startup, the engine coolant temperature sensor also sends information to the ECM. When the ECM judges that the engine is cold, based on engine coolant temperature sensor signal, the injectors injects extra amount of fuel to ensure steady idle during warm-up at cold engine operation. At constant driving, the amount of fuel injected by injectors will depend on the amount of air entering the cylinders, position of the throttle valve, and the engine speed. The ECM gets information of these factors through mass airflow sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor, throttle position sensor, and crankshaft position sensor. On the other hand, during high load driving, such as when the vehicle is driving uphill, the ECM will command the injectors to inject extra fuel in order to increase engine power. So how do you think the ECM detects that the engine is operating at high load? If you say that it is because of the sensors, you are right. The different sensors will be discussed in detail on succeeding topics. The electronic spark management system controls the spark plugs to generate spark at the correct time based on engine speed and engine load, as detected by the different sensors, the ECM is able to precisely control the ignition timing for improved engine power, cleaner exhaust emission, and knock prevention. As seen on the illustration, when the engine is at idle, as shown on the tachometer, the spark plug ignites the air and fuel mixture 10 degrees before top dead center. On actual engine operation, at idle, you may observe that the ignition timing will deviate from time to time and will not stick on a single value. This is due to the fact that the ECM will choose the optimal ignition timing. The values mentioned on this topic may vary depending on engine design and manufacturer's specifications. We can also see on the illustration that on a constant engine and vehicle speed, the ignition timing advances. For this engine model, 
It's approximately 25 degrees before top dead center. Remember that spark advance increases as engine speed increases for better performance and fuel economy. When the vehicle accelerates, engine load also increases. Ignition timing decreases approximately 10 degrees as seen on this illustration. Remember that spark advance leads to decrease under heavy engine load to avoid detonation or spark knock. The idle speed control system, as the name implies, controls engine idle speed. As illustrated, engine speed is increased during startup and during warm-up period. This is done to ensure easy starting and proper warm-up when the engine is cold. When the engine reaches its operating temperature, the idle speed is set as low as possible while maintaining a stable idle. This is to minimize fuel consumption and noise. When the AC switch is turned on or an increase in electrical load is detected, the idle speed is increased to ensure drivability. Computer controlled systems contains diagnostic function to, to aid technicians during troubleshooting. The ECM constantly monitors the input signals from the sensors. When the ECM detects a malfunction from these input devices, it, store, it stores the said malfunction in the form of diagnostic trouble codes and illuminates the malfunction indicator lamp or MIL. Technicians can then retrieve the said trouble codes by activating the ECM to output the diagnostic trouble codes by malfunction indicator lamp blinking or by a handheld testers, commonly known as scanners. You will learn how to retrieve diagnostic trouble codes on later topics and a video demonstration will be uploaded. Just wait for the link. The following are the advantages that an electronic engine management system can offer. Reduce exhaust emission and better fuel economy. Cold engine and wide open throttle enrichment in a carbureted fuel system causes fuel puddling in the intake manifold. Contrary to that, in an EFI system, fuel enrichment is reduced during cold engine operation and wide open throttle position, resulting in the reduction of harmful exhaust emission and lesser fuel consumption. Stable idle and adaptation to the various operating states of the engine. With the application of computer control for fuel injection and ignition timing, accurate air fuel ratio and spark is continuously provided to the engine, no matter what operating condition is encountered. Superior power and throttle response. Since fuel is directly delivered at the back of the intake valve, intake manifold design can be optimized. The result is improved air velocity in the intake valve, which has a significant effect on the engine's response and torque. Reduce maintenance requirements. Due to its fewer mechanical parts, the electronic engine management systems does not rely on frequent adjustment for fuel metering, cold enrichment, and ignition timing. 